Welcome to Just Minded My Business Media, LLC, where you get information that you can use. I'm your host, Ida Crawford, but before we dive in, subscribe to Just Minded My Business on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Share Just Minded My Business with your family, friends, and colleagues. Engage with us by leaving a review or comment. Your support keeps this podcast going and growing. Visit our website at jmmbmediallc.com to learn how we can support you in getting more visibility on your products and services. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media where you get information that you can use. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. But before we dive in, subscribe to Just Minding My Business on our YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcast. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Wow, I am so excited to bring Garrett and Ted self Garrett has sold more than a million books to guide entrepreneurs and investors. His bestseller include Start Your Own Corporation, Loopholes for Real Estate, and Veil Not Fail. I like that title. (laughs) For more than 30 years, he has run his practice assisting entrepreneurs and real estate investors in protecting their assets. The company he founded, Corporate Direct and Sutton Law Center currently help more than 14,000 clients protect their assets and maintain their entities, especially under the new Corporate Transparency Act. Gert has also served as a member of the elite group of Rich Dad Advisors for best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki. A number of the books Garrett Sutton has authored are part of the best-selling Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Wealth Building book series. Series. Garrett is also the president of Sunstream, a new streaming platform focused on kids' financial education and adult professional development. Wow, that's awesome. And Ted Sutton is a licensed attorney who is the son of Garrett Sutton. I love that. Ted was born and raised in Reno, Nevada. He graduated from the University of Utah with a BS in mining engineering. During one of his summers, he spent three months working at a mine in Chile. This experience made him realize that legal matters interested him more than engineering ones. After graduating in 2018, he decided to attend law school the following year. Ted attended the University of Wyoming College of Law. In his third year, he served as the student director of the Business Entrepreneurship Practicum, where he helped clients form and maintain LLCs. He graduated in May 2022. Ted is now licensed to practice law in Wyoming and Nevada. Ted has been focused on making sure corporate directs clients properly file under the Corporate Transparency Act. He is also the author of Five Tricks to Teach Your Kids About Money. Wow. I love it. I love it when family work together. It's been good, Ida. So thanks for having us. Thank you. And I know that was a mouthful, but I had to say it all. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So Let's get right into this Corporate Transparency Act that nobody is talking about and nobody really knows about. Well, the law was passed in 2020. 2021. Right. And it took effect January 1st of this year. And so people have known about it for three years. But again, no one's talking about it. The government hasn't sent out a notice saying that you need to file under this law. And in the law, the the, uh, not knowing the law is no excuse. I mean, you're you're held to know what the law is, but 
we've been trying to educate our clients and others like people listening to your show, Ida, about this new law because not many people know about it. And as Ted will discuss, the penalties are pretty darn significant. You need to follow this law uh, this year. So uh, if, if you want, Ted has become our expert and, and he can uh, tell you what the law requires. Yes, please. Because I'm, I'm like, what is this? When I first saw it, it was like, I forget the, the place where you have the file. I think it begins with a F. I read a little bit about it, but still, I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is, is you're not alone. I mean, there's a lot of people who've been left in the dark on this new law. So, uh, you know, FinCEN is the governing body that's handling all this. And, you know, now that I think of it, this can kind of be like the new F word that we have to deal with. <laughs> so, you know, FinCEN. Um, so, yeah, they're they're a branch of the U.S. Department of the Treasury, and they handle things like money laundering, illegal activity, going after criminals. And so when the Corporate Transparency Act was passed, uh, they tasked FinCEN with setting up a database where 30 million small business owners are going to have to report their information. And you have three pieces of information that you need to report. The first is the reporting company information. So this is, you know, LLCs, corporations, limited partnerships, all the like. So you're going to need to report information about your company. The second thing is that you're going to need to report beneficial ownership information. And this relates to anyone who owns an interest in a company. You know, if you own 25% or you hold any management authority, uh, you'd count as a beneficial owner. And you'd need to report your personal information in that situation. And then the third piece of information is company applicant information. And this is the person who sets up the company. So, you know, we here at Corporate Direct, we help 13,000 clients across all 50 states. So we would be the company applicant in that situation. But, you know, if you want to set up the LLC on your own, um, then you as an individual would have to you would be the company applicant. You'd have to report information. Um, so, so Ida, there's one thing when Ted mentioned the personal information, the one thing they want is your driver's license or passport number, and they want a copy of it. So this database is going to have all sorts of sensitive mm -hmm. information in it. Uh, now, if you don't do the filing, the penalty is $10,000 uh, in penalties and or two years in prison. So you can go to prison for willfully failing uh, to file this information. So the, the penalties are pretty significant and the database is going to have a lot of confidential information in it. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a target rich database. People are going to want to hack in there yes. and get all this information. And we'll see how good the government is in protecting this. And we know that is not good right there because hackers are way smarter than the government. Hackers um, never get caught. No, no. They're like invisible people. <laughs> you know, wow. Is there a fee to f put to get into this database? Uh, no. So the filings are completely free, which is good. Um. The thing is, is we can do the filings for people, but, you know, you if you want to do it on your own, you can. Um, and, you know, another thing I should mention is that it is, a you know, it's going to have a lot of confidential information, but um, it is not available to the public, which is good. Um, so it's only going to be available to like financial institutions and uh, law enforcement agencies. So hopefully it does get hacked, but, you know, if... People, you know, regular people can't access the database on their own. And I think that's really important to tell people that because mm -hmm. I have gotten a lot of questions from people saying that, oh, well, people can just look up my confidential information in there, um, but they can't, which is good. But like dad mentioned, we'll see how safe this database is. I mean, I really hope it doesn't get hacked, but um you know, I think over the last few years, we've kind of seen a pattern. 
Oh yeah, I mean, so, hacking is like part of our world today. <laughs> so, so I know we we will uh, file for our clients. We charge a fee because there's a, a bit of work involved. You have to track down who all the beneficial owners are. It's it's not an easy process. Okay. The other thing to know is when you know you file once and as long as the information stays the same you don't have to amend it but let's say you bring in a new shareholder who owns 25 percent you've got to amend the filing with the government the other thing is that i mentioned on the passports and the driver's licenses though that information has to be kept current so if you go get a new driver's license you'll have a new number and then you have to amend your fincen filing with the new number for your driver's license. So there is an ongoing requirement uh, to amend these. It doesn't have to be done every year, but when you make a change, you need to amend your, your FinCEN filing. Okay, so what if you have an LLC that you are no longer active in? How does that work? So if you don't, so you're saying the LLC is set up um, you know, it's registered with the Secretary of State, but you don't own an interest in it anymore? Well, you still have it, but you're not really using it. You, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people yeah. have yeah. LLCs and they end up getting another one and basically focusing their energy on that and not doing anything with the previous one. Right. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So. In that situation, uh, there are some exemptions to uh, what constitutes a reporting company. Uh, the biggest one is the large operating company exemption. So that's where you have like $5 million in gross receipts, more than 20 employees, and a physical presence in the U.S. That's the most important one. Uh, but another exemption that people need to know about is called the inactive entity exemption. Okay. And this is where you have an entity, it's set up before 2020, um, you haven't put any money into it, you haven't taken money out, um, there hasn't been any change in ownership, and also there no foreign national owns an interest in it. Okay. So it sounds like the LLC that you have, um, it may be able to meet the inactive entities exemption, and in that situation, you just wouldn't need to report your information to FinCEN. The, okay. the other strategy could be to just dissolve it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, if you're not way. using it and you don't want to pay the annual filing fees, you may just want to dissolve it. You can always start a new one. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Because I think, especially in the small business arena, you know, you hear you need to get an LLC, you need to set up your entity. And people just do it, but now, and then they either get out of business, no longer do the business, and it just sort of sits there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we see that uh, quite a bit, Ida. The, the other thing is you'll have people just say, oh, I have an LLC, you can use mine, and they take it over, but you need to make sure that your name is not listed as a beneficial owner with that LLC or that they're going to make the filing because you just don't, this is another layer of liability now for these mm -hmm. LLCs. Yeah. Um, and so you want to make sure that if you do let someone, you know, buy your LLC, that they're going to do the proper filings on it. Mm, okay. Wow. This is definitely right on time, guys. I'm like, and nobody is talking about this. And no. I am so surprised you don't hear it in the media. You haven't, I mean, that's why when I saw it, I was like, what is this? Because I hadn't heard about it. And the well, government it, is not really articulating it. it. It It's a unique law too, Ida, in that most regulations are geared towards big businesses, right? Mm -hmm. This one is geared towards the small businesses. Um, you know, the, the government feels that people are conducting money laundering and terrorist financing through these small entities. And so that's who they've targeted here, not the big businesses, mm -hmm. but the small businesses. Wow. Uh, of course, the Wall Street Journal, when they were writing about this uh, in an editorial, said, you know, are the bad guys really going to self-report? I mean, right. is, is <laughs> all this effort going to catch the bad guys? Right. Uh, 
but we'll see it's the law and our job is to help our clients follow the law and so that's why we're telling people about this and we're providing a service to help them follow the law yeah. yes and on that note if people need to work with you on this how do they reach out to you yeah so you can find us at corporatedirect.com um, the website has articles and other additional information on the corporate transparency act and on top of that, I we have a YouTube channel. Um, and so if you head on over to YouTube and type in Corporate Direct, you can find the channel there. Uh, I've done several videos on the Corporate Transparency Act and the little details regarding it. So, you know, I've done a little section for each part of the law. Uh, and you also can find other matters that relate to corporate law on the YouTube channel too. So those are the two places you can find us. All right. and, and we offer a free 15 minute consultation with a paralegal. If you have questions, if you need help filing uh, the FinCEN uh, forms, uh, we can get on the phone with you, tell you how we can help. Uh, because again, we want people to follow the law. If you don't, $10,000 in penalties and two years in prison. It's a really steep penalty that they put on this. Yes, indeed. And some small businesses, they're not making $10,000. You know, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they're getting, you know, they're growing, they're getting their business up and running, and they, they are work in progress. So they don't have any $10,000 to give anybody right yeah for not being in compliance with this particular law well i am so glad we are talking about this because i didn't i did nothing about this at all uh until i accidentally i'm just out surfing and i saw something from um i think it was a new york times and about it and i was like what in the world is this so I posted it on my LinkedIn page and I haven't even seen any of my financial people mention about this, you know? Uh, okay. So they obviously don't know. Yeah. Either. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a, it's a government requirement. And a lot of times you will, like you say, Ida, hear about a new law that affects 30 million people. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but it's it's not a happy law. I don't think the Treasury Department is too you know too happy about telling people that they have to file this information. Um, you know, it, it's not something that anyone would crow about. It, it's right. It's an obligation that is just another uh, requirement for businesses to follow. I mean, you're trying, like you say, Ida, you're trying to make money. You're trying to make a go at it. And here's the government adding on another regulation. Mm. Um, and so it's it's not popular. Uh, and so it kind of makes sense that they're not talking about it. But, you know, our job as, an attor as attorneys and educators like you is to keep our audience informed of these new laws and how to how to handle it. Yes, for sure. Because ignorance can cost. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorance yeah. of the law is no excuse. That that's been through the court system. The fact that you didn't know the law is no is has never been an excuse. Absolutely, absolutely. So I am so glad that we are talking about this. So let's talk some more about your asset protection that you offer. Tell us about that. Yeah. So Corporate Direct is a registered agent and business formation service. So, you know, we do the filings with the Secretary of State. We get the paperwork done for you. Um, and if you have any legal questions on top of that, you can schedule a call with either my dad or myself. And we think that this is really important because there are, you know, some other services out there that just get you set up with the Secretary of State. And people say, okay, well, I did this. So am I good to go? And the answer there is no. And um, the reason being is that we do live in a very litigious society. So business owners do run a high risk of getting sued by someone. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing called piercing the corporate veil, where if a business gets sued, then 
that person suing the business can try and pierce the corporate veil to hold the business owner individually liable. And dad has written a book about this topic. It's called Veil Not Fail. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Yes. Uh, and Veil Not Fail, it's actually a really good book because veil piercing claims succeed half of the time. Mm. So if your business gets sued and they want to pierce the corporate veil, you know, it's a coin flip to determine um, whether or not you win or lose in that situation, whether or not you're held personally liable. So the best way to prevent that corporate veil from being pierced is by following what we call the corporate formalities. And, you know, Veil Not Fail goes in very much in depth on that topic. But some of the formalities are having a separate bank account, you know, getting the EIN number, which we can do for you, mm -hmm. setting up a separate bank account for your business, um, making sure that you're in good standing with the Secretary of State. Uh, there was a lawsuit that I was involved with where um, somebody had an LLC and we sued the LLC, but it wasn't in good standing with the Secretary of State. Mm. And in that situation, it is a green light to um, go after the individual. Personally. Go after them, yeah, as an individual. So that's another thing to be aware of. And then also making sure that you have documentation, making sure that you have an operating agreement mm. that governs you know, how the business is going to operate, what happens if something bad happens. Having meeting minutes, you know, annual meetings, keeping minutes of those meetings, mm -hmm. um, and then also just holding yourself out as the manager of your LLC or your corporation, as opposed to in your individual capacity. So, so, so I I would add one more corporate formality to that, and that is you've got to file the Corporate Transparency Act filings. You've yeah. got to file with FinCEN. That's a corporate formality. If you fail to do that, that's another reason. For someone to pierce the corporate veil, you're not following all the rules. Mm. So add that to the list. Yeah, I just hope they don't add nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right. crazy. Wow. But that's important, though, because a lot of people, you know, they tell you get, get have an entity, set your entity up. But many people do not know the full meaning of what the different entities uh, are yeah. and that kind of thing. And having an attorney to, you know, explain that to you in layman terms is, is real important because your business at the, that's like the ground bottom of your business and you're building it up. And it's like, if you don't have that foundation intact, you just, you're going to crumble. Yeah. Right. No. And that's a really good analogy that I like to use, too, is that getting your LLC properly set up, it is like building a foundation for your house. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can go to one of the cheaper services and just get it set up with the secretary of state. But, you know, as an analogy, that's kind of like having a bad foundation. Mm -hmm. So it's important to take additional steps just to make sure that that foundation is solid and it'll withstand anything bad happening. So, you know, that's what we're here for. Uh, we're here to make sure that your foundation is as solid as it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, at this point, it could be when your business gets sued, you're going to want to make sure that you're protected. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we know we got professional people out there that that's what they get up and do. Yeah. Look for companies to sue. Yeah, Just like right. the hackers. <laughs> yeah, like hackers, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to mention one thing, if I could, and that, you know, I've written all these books and Ted's first book, uh, The Five Tricks to Teach Your Kid About Kids About Money, yeah. uh, is available for free. You can download it for free uh, mm -hmm. by going to sunstream, S-U-N-N stream.com slash five tricks. Sunstream is a website or, or a streaming platform that we've started. And one of our focuses is on kids' financial education. Yes. You know, parents are wondering, where can I get my kids educated on money, right? They don't teach it in schools. We need to have our kids be really well educated on money. And yes. so that's one of our focuses at Sunstream. Uh, and if you want to get Ted's book for free, it's, it's pretty darn good. So it's at sunstream.com. 
Yeah. All righty. That sounds awesome. I'll make sure I make a big note on this interview about the book, because I think it's important that we teach our children at a young age about money. Yeah. No, you're definitely right there. And I think an important thing is how do we do it? Yeah. You know, what, you know, what are things that we can do to increase their financial IQ? Mm -hmm. And so the five tricks, it goes through, you know, five quote unquote tricks. And, you know, this isn't like playing a trick on your kids. It's more so like methods that you can use to teach your kids about money to increase their financial IQ in a fun way in so a fun not, way yeah work it's yeah just it's a fun way to learn yeah it's not like people are pranking their kids or anything I mean that'd be <laughs> that'd be a little bit cruel so I don't I don't want to you know have that out there but yeah it's a good book um I mean obviously I'm going to say that but there are it does sort of provide a roadmap for what parents can do for their kids. And it applies to a wide age range too. So if you could go check that out, like dad said, sunstream.com, S-U-N-N-S-T-R-E-A-M.com slash five tricks. And it's totally free. So if you download it, I'd very much appreciate it. I'm at 200 downloads right now. Awesome. Uh, he sold he sold a million books. So if you can help close that gap for me, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> you got You're it. You're on the edge. It's free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you can't lose. It's free. You can only gain. Now, yeah. do you do anything with adults? Because we all know that grown-ups need help with money, too. <laughs> yeah. Well... I know we are uh, focusing on professional development as well. We have oh, some okay. um, uh, uh, series up there on the site uh, and we're going to expand it uh, on professional development. We just launched in December. So we're just, we're just getting started, uh, but we've made three original movies. Uh, we've got original shows. We have a great show called the U S constitution for kids. Wow. You know, and that's another topic they don't teach Ida is civics. And so we want to get our kids educated on civics. So Sunstream is offering that type of content as well. Wow. That sounds awesome. Cause you start with the kids and you have a brighter tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Agree. It, it, it's just the bottom line, you know, and when I look at some of the kids in our society and then you think about one day they're going to be taking care of you. It's like, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need all the support we can get and making sure that our kids are ready to take care of us when we can't take care of ourselves. So that's very, very important. Well, that's been his plan for a while. And I guess it's well, kind of working good out. Good plan. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Good plan. So again, how do people connect with you? Well, uh, our main website is corporatedirect.com. And there you can schedule a free 15-minute consult. You can learn about the Corporate Transparency Act. And then the streaming platform, you can learn about it at sunstream.com. And that's where you can get Ted's free book. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. This has been eye opening. I am so happy that you um, shed some light on this new corporate law they have out because I was clueless and I'm sure there was many people out there that was clueless. <laughs> Still are. Yeah. And this conversation definitely, um, you know, made me opened up my eyes that, uh, to what I need to do in order to you know, be in, in compliance, period, because I don't have no $10,000 to give nobody yeah. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, let's make sure you're filed. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you guys again. And I am looking forward to more collaborations. And how often do you um post on your YouTube channel? Uh, right now, it's once a week. So okay. we have one video every Tuesday, and then we have a short that comes out every Friday. Oh, okay. Okay. And the benefit there is that if you want to comment on one of the videos, if you want to suggest a topic, uh, you know, I'm happy to get around to it to post about that. Oh, okay. Okay. All righty. So thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah,
And thank you, audience, for tuning in. We appreciate you as well. Thank you to our guests and you, our valued audience, for stopping by. We truly appreciate you. Many blessings to you and yours.